Hello and welcome back to the Beautiful Things channel. This tutorial is for you if you have a computerised sewing machine and are absolutely sick to death of it being incapable of sewing a buttonhole properly. How many times have you sewn your buttonhole on scrap fabric for it to work absolutely perfectly and then come to stitch it on the garment for it to just eat it all up? Well, I'm going to show you a super duper trick. It's called Get out the old school machine. Use a mechanical sewing machine. They stitch buttonholes beautifully, absolutely perfectly, because you're in control and not the computerized memory of your machine. Now, if you don't happen to have a manual sewing machine, then they are available for less than hundred pounds. And I honestly think they are worth having in your amnesty. No, that's the wrong word. In your arms, your unit, in your got lots of guns what's it called armory no never mind they're worth having <laughs> Computerised machines serve a fantastic purpose. They are lovely, but I always swear by my manual if I'm doing anything really heavy. They will stitch through denim and through jeans absolutely brilliantly, as has been discovered this weekend on our jeans making course here in the studio. And they're really, you know, my go-to machine if I need to do anything meaty that I want to be 100% in control of. So what you will need with your manual machine is it's zipper it's not a zipper foot it's buttonhole foot it looks a little bit scary it's not as scary as the computerized one because it doesn't have an area for you to put your button in it's up to you to measure the size of the buttonhole that you need now on average if you lay your button down on a piece of fabric and add quarter of an inch and you measure across the button add that quarter of an inch that's roughly how long you need your buttonhole to be and you can draw onto your fabric a little marking like this. So you've got your length of your buttonhole and then just pop a couple of little lines at the top and bottom. That's gonna help you sew it. Once you've got your sewing machine threaded up, you're just gonna change the foot. Um, I'm going to assume that you know how to do that. Um, if you've got a computerized machine or if you've got a manual machine, you should know how to change the foot. So I'm just gonna quickly switch mine over now. So once your foot's on your machine, you want to slide it all towards you. The difference with a four step buttonhole, which is what this is going to do, is that it sews forwards first. So it needs to have room to stitch forward and slide back. Unlike a computerized one, which tends to sew backwards first. So make sure that all of your foot is in front and it's not slid to the back. So like so. You want to have your stitch length set to this lovely big picture here, which is your buttonhole setting. And you're going to have your stitch selector on number one. So as you can see, it does one side, then it sews across the bottom, then it sews up the other side, and then it sews across the top. So we want to start with one, and it's going to sew from the back towards you to the front. The first thing that you want to do is to take the thread that's coming through your needle and pass it down through the foot so it comes out underneath. Now, once your presser foot's down, I'm gonna point at this with my scissors and hope it doesn't go out of focus. You can see you've got these two little arcs here and there's like a little point there, a little point in the center and a little point on the left. The little central point needs to be lined up with your line that you're going to sew. This is actually going to be the bit that you're going to cut. The little dip here is going to sew one side and the little dip here is going to sew down the other side. So when you're all lined up, turn your hand wheel and put your needle down into your fabric. Now you're going to start sewing and it's going to do a very tight zigzag stitch. You have to guide it. You want to keep going until you reach the bottom where your little bar that you drew is. And once you hit it, you're going to change your selector to the number two. And what's gonna happen now is your needle's gonna go left, right, left, right, left, right across the bottom of your buttonhole. Now, it will just keep going, so you have to determine when to stop. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's probably about enough. Nine, ten, just to be sure. <laughs> 
Then you're going to turn your selector to three. Now your machine is going to sew backwards and it's going to zigzag up the other side of your buttonhole. Take it nice and slowly because you need to stop when it reaches the top end. And once it gets to the top, you're going to change that stitch selector again. This time you're going back to the middle to number four. And now it's going to go across the top. We'll go for ten again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Now, the great thing is, if when you did across the top, you have a little gap between where you started coming down and going across the top, you can go back to your stitch selector, pop it back onto one, and just come down a little tiny way just to finish off that buttonhole. And sometimes I like to go over my buttonhole twice to make it a bit more sturdy but if I do that I don't worry about doing the bottom across the bottom bit I just jump straight back to three and come up the outside edge And then I don't do anything across the top either. Then lift up your needle, lift up your presser foot, out it comes. And there is your buttonhole all stitched and ready to cut. So I hope you found that useful. I know I always use a manual machine to do my buttonholes. I feel much safer and it's much less stressful and I know that it's going to perform for me. I will see you all again really soon. Thanks for watching. Bye.